A short while ago, I watched a retro snow episode on Consuming Ninja for the Atari Jaguar, and I thought how good that game was compared to the game I recently got in a box along with other games that were worth playing. When I mentioned as much, Snowcon 3 replied, I don't think I know that game, although now I'm afraid to try it. To save him the trouble, I've pieced together this little review on... Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Doomsday Warrior. The game starts out oddly enough, with no sound at the intro, and it wasn't until I noticed the spiraling in logo that I realized that my system wasn't broken. And then I was presented with a screen that played no music at all, and just said, press start. That's right, no music, just press start. When I did, it moved to the next screen. The four options that you're presented with are normal, easy, versus game, and key configuration. Once you actually get to the select screen, there are seven warriors to choose from. They start off fairly normal until you get to P-Lump, Grimlock, and New Upon selecting one of the warriors, you're then told to select your rival, and the fight will begin. When the fight begins with you warping in fighting the problem, the characters can jump the full height and half the width of the screen, which is a huge jump behind the light bars. The music reminds me of spending time in an elevator and the sound effects aren't much better. Without much difference between the sound of getting hit and actually blocking, I wasn't really sure what was going on and it got very monotonous. I did however find that the most amusing part of this game to be the continue screen. For some reason, these little two guys are duking it out while you decide whether to give up or not. It just amuses me and I found myself sitting there watching it for quite some time. This brings me to one of the strangest things in this game, and why it may have a leg up on Kasumi Ninja, is that this game, when you lose eventually, you have a password that you can enter in. That's right, a password. Remember those? As with other fighting games, this game has special moves, but all of these moves are charge based. Uh, that's right, no quarter circles or any of that nonsense. All of the special moves are either hold back then forward and press a button, or hold down and then press up and a button. Guile fans, rejoice. Speaking of Street Fighter, I should point out that this game came out a whole seven months after Street Fighter 2 here in the USA. So that means that we are sure that quarter circles had been invented by then. Should you actually win a match, in this game you'll be supplied with a skill up screen that has five different power upgrades. Arm, leg, defense, vitality, and soul. Arm and leg upgrades affect your punches and kicks respectively. Defense lowers the amount of damage you take. Vitality and soul are more hypothetical in function. Vitality may shorten the duration of you being stunned, and soul possibly increases the amount of damage your special attacks do. As you fight through, you'll notice that the AI really only does one of two things. It either stays back from range and attacks you, or will constantly attack you from point blank range. There's really no middle ground for all the one or two of the fighters. This game is not very good, and it lacks any sense of charm or grace for me that some of the other dreary fighting games that came out for the NES have, and it's certainly no Street Fighter 2. The only reason I can see to own this game, other than by accident, like me, is if you want a true, complete set of the fighters on the Super Nintendo. This one will be returning to my shelf, just as a warning for others that there are some games that just aren't that good. 
Until next time, I'm still Jack Allaire. Play on.